This week, I want to share with you a Christian motorcycle group I called the Forgiven Christian Riders, how I started it and what happened to it, how to protect your bike from theft, and how to save money with insurance policies. Welcome to Indian Motorcycle Radio, and I'm your host, Reverend Ken Blanchard. This is the show about Indian motorcycles and the people that ride and love them. In a galaxy far, far away. Actually, just the time before the internet, I wanted to create a motorcycle club, a riding club, a Christian motorcycle group, folks that I could get together with and we could ride from church to church and grow our organization and allow that the members of that group to be evangelists, to be bikers, to be regular people that were Christian and rode cycles. It didn't really matter what brand. It would be a multi, you know group, different denominations even, and I was going to call it the Forgiven Christian Motorcycle Riders. I thought, yeah, that sounds like a really good deal. It's not going to be like Hell's Angels or the Pagans or anything scary, not one of the 1% guys, just a Christian group. And then every church could have a chapter and then we could meet up on Saturdays and then have a special day on Sundays and all ride together after services and attend each other's churches and it'd be a brotherhood thing, right? So back in the day, we had Yahoo. Yahoo Groups was really big. So I went and created the FCR, the Forgiven Christian Writers, and had a patch made because, you know, you need a logo. I like the way that the Christian Motorcycle Association logo looked. I like the way, I really like the way the Bikers for Christ logo was with the multicolored wings and the sword in the middle. Man, was that a work of art. And then just the thought of being around other people who had the same coolness as me. Folks that believed in Jesus the Christ. Folks who believe that faith is not believing God can. Faith is knowing God will. Um, having little sl- slogans like riding with the sun, S-O-N. And every saint has a past. Every sinner has a future. Stuff like that. I mean, uh, the whole armor of God thing. I mean, it was just so much good stuff in this whole biker thing. So I had the patch made. I forgot who did it. I think I went, paid like goo gobs of money somewhere and um, had this thing designed for my crazy uh, proportions. I wanted the cross, of course. I wanted a motorcycle helmet with blood coming down. I wanted uh, a hawk or or. I wanted a dove, but I didn't want it to be like one of those sissy doves that really weak vector artistry illustrations, like really weak. Those little templates that everybody uses over and over again to the 20th degree. So my dove looked almost like an eagle, which I ain't mad. Found somebody that could do the embroidery and uh, made these patches. And I had one made and then put it up on Facebook. No, you Yahoo groups. That's right. This is beyond this is before Facebook. Yeah, I know. I'm old, man. And this brother from North Carolina picked up on it. He said, hey, man, can we start a chapter here? And I said, yes, you can. We are rolling. I got one. And then I got email from South Africa. Yeah, this is in like 1992. And they basically started about three chapters in the southern area of Africa. Unbelievable. So I went to a couple of churches and I gave presentations hoping to motivate a few people. And, you know, this is real evangelism. I was expecting the crowd to stand on their feet and just... But instead, I got a... But it's okay, because I'm doing this for the kingdom of God, not for my own ego. I rolled on. This was going to be a part of In the Wilderness Ministries and had my back patch, and I was going to go. And maybe if there are a couple of rides and ride around the county, ride around the state, folks would see the forgiven Christian writers and they would know our creed. 
Now, I know that everybody who is listening to this is not Christian. So understanding that, I still want to share this declaration of the forgiven. Um, It kind of goes like this. It says, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I claim the victory of Jesus, the Christ over my life. In God, I will trust with my all. With this declaration, I claim him as my Lord and Savior. I know him to be sent, lived, crucified, and got up on the third day for me. From his stripes, I have been healed, delivered, and forgiven. I won't look back, slow down, back away, or be still. My past is redeemed. My present makes sense. My future is secure. I am finished and done with low living, side walking, small planning, smooth knees, colorless dreams, same visions, mundane talking, cheap giving, and little goals. I am forgiven. I no longer need preeminence, prosperity, promotions, positions, plaudits, or popularity. I don't have to be right, first, tops, recognized, regarded, rewarded, or praised. I now live in the present. I lean by faith. I walk by patience. I'm lifted by prayer and labor by power. I let go of the guilt and claim the freedom given to me by Jesus who said, Go and sin no more. I am forgiven. My face is set. My gate is fast. My goal is heaven. My road is narrow. My way is rough. My companions are few. My guide is reliable. My mission is clear. I cannot be bought, compromised, lured, manipulated, enticed, or bribed. I will not flinch in the face of sacrifice, hesitate in the presence of the adversary, negotiate at the table of the enemy, ponder at the pool of popularity, or meander in the maze of mediocrity. I won't give up, shut up, or let up until I've stayed up, prayed up, and preached for the cause of Christ. I am forgiven. I will continue on until he comes. Give till I drop. Preach all I know and work until he stops me. And when he comes back, he will have no problems recognizing me. For I have forgotten all that is in the past. I'm pressing on for the prize, the high calling of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am forgiven. So that was my little declaration of the forgiven. And uh, it goes with the patch. And, you know, it was part of our ministry. And I kind of reestablished it after I became pastor of um, Historic Berean Baptist Church in D.C. But even as pastor of that church, that church didn't want any outside stuff happening. They were leery of motorcyclists. They were they were an odd lot. So odd, I had to run out of there eventually. But I did get a chance to meet Ricky Bass from North Carolina that started a chapter of The Forgiven. And that was kind of cool. He came up on um, the holiday that we celebrate, Memorial Day, where everybody was coming for Rolling Thunder to Washington, D.C. And I had an opportunity, I thought, to um, fill the parking lot up and have almost a, a cookout for all the bikers from out of town, make this one of my spots, because we were not too far from where everybody meets up at Rolling Thunder. And my church was like, no, we don't want the liability. We don't want the people. We don't want strangers in our parking lot. And I thought, yeah, if Jesus rolled in here, you chase him out too. So I'm gone. So my pastor in a small church in Washington, D.C. lasted all of seven years, two years as a, an assistant and five years as the pastor. And it was a rough road for sure. Just like the declaration, that road was rough. And my friends were a few. So, Ricky, if you're out there, give me a shout, man. I want to know how you're doing. And so I learned that one of my superpowers is to start stuff. I can create at the drop of a hat. I can motivate and inspire people. And then, like a dude that needs Viagra, it just goes away. But don't you go away. I'll be right back with a commercial. Hey, do you like this show? Here's a way you can help. Visit buymeacoffee.com forward slash motorcycles. Help me make this a listener supported podcast dedicated to good people like you. Buy me a coffee is a way you can encourage and help me continue to bring you Indian motorcycle radio. Buymeacoffee.com forward slash motorcycles. The link is in the show notes. Thanks.
Hey, in case you're wondering how my search for a new motorcycle is going, I found an awesome looking bike out in Colorado somewhere. It's um like a red and gray icon, but I can't seem to find it anymore. Maybe it's already sold, but it was like thirty six, thirty seven thousand dollars for this thing. But it was the prettiest bike I've seen so far. And I kind of wanted it. And then I found one that's burgundy with the um, tan seats somewhere in Pittston, PA. The 2018, it looked kind of good. But I'm still undecided. That one actually is the best price. There's a beautiful blue one somewhere in Westfield, Mass. But uh, that's out of the out of the range, I believe. So we're still wishing. Meanwhile. Anybody like saving money? Yeah. You know, you can save money by slashing that cost of motorcycle insurance, if you think about it. If you want the best price, look for a company that offers the most discounts. Makes sense, right? After you check with whoever you're insured with now, look around. Don't simply assume that your current insuring company has the best place to park your coverage. Instead, take that quote from your existing carrier and shop it around with other companies. Most audio insurance um, companies offer coverage for bikes as well. And some specialty carriers like Rider Insurance provide coverage exclusively. Start with the one you already got with your car and see if they offer multi-policy discounts, which means you get a better deal if you don't already have it. There's some common discounts for bikers. There's the mature rider discount, not necessarily for the old riders, but for those with several years of riding under their belt. But you got to ask. Nobody's going to give you a discount without asking. There's the paid in full discount for those who pay their premium in one lump sum. This one works really, really well. There's the responsible driver discount for those who have no claims. There are multi-bike discounts. There's discounts for having anti-lock brakes, actually. There's continuous coverage discount for those who don't cancel in the winter. And I'm going to bring that up in a minute and then sign back up in better driving weather. That is a way to save money, though. But if you throw that out there ahead of time, you might be able to cut some dollars off knowing that you might do it. Motorcycle safety class is a good way to reduce some funds. Not only will it save you money on insurance now, but you'll reap the benefits in the long run by making you a better rider. Like Geico offers a 10% discount for those taking a motorcycle safety foundation or a military safety course. If you have the free time on your hand, you could double that and become a motorcycle safety foundation instructor. And that title alone will earn you a 20% discount from Geico. You could install an anti-theft device. You could join a group. There's discounts for some big clubs and associations like the AMA, the American Motorcycle Association, They give discounts for being in there or the BMW Motorcycle Owners of America, Goldwing Touring Association, the Harley Owners Group, Honda Riders Club, Motorcycle Safety Foundation members, and the Motorcycle Touring Association all give discounts. Now, I was talking about canceling that thing. You could cancel your coverage and reapply in the spring, but a smarter option may be to switch to storage coverage for the winter months. That way, you might get a continuous coverage discount. Plus, you have a peace of mind knowing that your bike is covered should the storage unit go up in flames or a tree falls on your barn. In April or May, whenever the weather is nice enough to ride, phone the insurance company and revert to coverage you had the previous summer. How about, uh, do you really need comprehensive comprehensive or collision insurance on a 10-year-old bike? Keep your liability insurance, which protects you if you injure someone, on your bike or get sued for an incident or an accident. However, anything beyond that may be questionably valued, especially since if you're riding on an older bike, hmm, you need to weigh the cost to replace your bike against the cost of full coverage premiums and decide whether it might make sense to drop your policy to the bare minimum. Just remember that the bare minimum won't pay for a new bike if you total it. And finally, you people who want to save money, The final tip is that applies to insurance coverage of all kinds. Raise your deductible. The higher the the deductible, the lower your premium. In case you've forgotten what the deductible is, it's the amount you pay out of pocket before your insurance company pitches it. If you have a thousand bucks in the bank, 
going with a higher deductible can make sense. It can lower your monthly cost substantially. And if you're a good writer, there may be minimal risk of being in an accident and filing a claim anyway. Just a few things that, while you're sitting there, to think about on how to save money. And if I can help in any way, that's why I'm doing it. I am not in the motorcycle insurance business, and all this information is for entertainment purposes only. So don't sue me. (laughs) Motorcycle theft is a serious issue. Over 45,000 bikes are stolen in the U.S. every year. That's more than one every 12 minutes. Even worse, motorcycles are never recovered since they are pieced out and sold for parts or rebuilt onto legitimate frames. This week, and maybe you can refer back to this later, are some tips and some equipment to protect your bike. The National Insurance Crime Bureau says that the top states for motorcycle thefts in 2018 were California, Florida, Texas, New York, South Carolina, North Carolina, Indiana, Missouri, Georgia, and Colorado in that order. Not surprisingly, the cities that suffered the most stolen bikes last year are among the most densely populated in the nation, including New York, Los Angeles, Miami, Las Vegas, San Diego, San Francisco, Houston, Philadelphia, Austin, and San Jose. There are essentially two types of motorcycle thieves. I was going to say three and call that third one an MF, but that ain't this kind of show. Those who see an opportunity to steal a bike on the spot and then do. Those who target specific bikes or owners in advance and approach the theft strategically. These two types, both MFs, are thieves that have different mindsets and tactics when it comes to motorcycle thievery. But fortunately, there are several things that you can do to deter them both. The National Insurance Crime Bureau recommends having a layered approach to prevent theft. The more layers you have, the less likely your bike will be stolen. Here's my own list, and I don't have any, um, any, what do you call those things? Amazon links to these damn things. So do some research. Look for wheel locks, motorcycle cover, shackles, smart trackers, you know, with the GPS thing on it, hooked to your cell phone, low jack, disc locks, steering locks, Electric kill switches. An alarm that's connected with a lock. Those are some things you can put on. But you could customize your bike, too. You know, customizing your bike is fun. It gives you that ride, a unique look, and a lot of modifications can also improve your bike's performance. But you know, the more customized bike you are, professional criminals don't want to mess with. Why? Because a customized bike is easily identifiable. And that's the one thing they don't want. Of course, it doesn't mean your bike won't be targeted. But if your bike is stolen, if customization does you no good, if you can't effectively report it to the police. So make sure you have plenty of pictures highlighting the changes that you made to your machine. Not only are photos helpful to police, but in today's high-tech world of social media, sticking a photo of your bike on Facebook or on Twitter doesn't hurt. And you might be lucky enough to recover your bike that way. If your bike's ever stolen... You also want to make sure that you can provide these details along with your photos. License plate number, your VIN, make, model, and year. Think about visibility when you park. Always take that thing seriously. If you're in public, keep your motorcycle in sight and in a well-lit place. If possible, park in a location where you'll be able to keep an eye on it. And if it isn't, the next best spot, the ne- the next best spot is where a security camera has your bike in view. But even as a general rule of thumb, keeping your bike in plain view of other people, and lots of them, is often enough to deter criminals. When you're at home, try to do just the opposite. Keep your bike completely out of sight. If you can, place it in a locked garage, and at the minimum, put a cover over it. I was recently at a friend's house, and he had about three or four bikes in his garage, but they were like out there, just there, and the garage was open most of the time. It would be nothing for somebody just to drive up and remove his bikes. A cover will obstruct a number of important details that a thief might be looking for, such as the type of bike that it is. You might want to keep your bike away from your keys. Makes all sense in the world. Keep your keys away from your bike. 
You might think it's common sense, right? But it's easy to think that nothing can happen in 30 seconds as you just hop off your bike for a moment, and then suddenly your bike could be gone. If you get off your bike, take your keys with you. Never leave them in the ignition or with your bike in general. This rule extends to your home. If your bike is parked in the garage, don't keep your keys on a peg next to it. Take them in the house with you or somewhere that isn't that obvious. How about that kill switch option? That makes it impossible to start your bike even if the criminal has the keys. It also makes it impossible to hotwire your bike. Of course, the criminal knows to flip the kill switch, then it does no good. But if you can install a hidden kill switch, you add an extra layer of protection. How about an anti-theft lock with an alarm? A motorcycle lock will make it more difficult to steal your bike. An alarm will add to the nuisance and scare away, maybe, a thief if they attempt it. Some devices have both these functions, but that isn't necessary. If you want to take it to the next step, find a lock that is obvious. That will allow it to act not only as a prevention device, but also as a deterrent as well. Thieves are less likely to attempt to steal a bike if they can think the job is going to be harder or more risky. You want to make your bike harder, a harder target, so they look at the other bikes and go, okay, this one's just too much work. Most criminals are lazy MFs, so make your bike a harder target. And if you've got kids listening and they're asking a the question, what is an MF, Daddy? You can just tell them it's a motorcycle fiend. That's a, a good thing to say. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's the ticket. Fiend. Yeah. And if you're parking your bike outside, or maybe even in a garage, see if you can install one of those cement block locks that kind of hooks it, kind of cements it to the ground. Um, you kind of drill a hole into your garage floor and you attach a bracket so that you can anchor basically your bike's chain to that. You can do that outside as well if you have the property. The cool thing when I was doing research for this thing was that I didn't see not one Indian bike in the statistics, which is a good thing because one, our bikes are unique. Um, Two, I don't know what two is, but be careful out there, y'all. Damn. I have heard of bikes being stolen at motorcycle shows, though. Like you go to um, those rallies like down in Florida or Georgia or Black Hills, South Dakota, where there are professional biker thieves out there looking for stuff. And they got the van. They got the whole gizmo. They got a whole truck ready for your stuff. So if you're in a big function, a big rally, be extra careful, too. Everybody there ain't cool. There are motorcycle fiends walking around. And let's say you have a commuter bike, a bike that you ride every day. Um, let, just let you know that folks are watching you, and maybe somebody wants what you got. So it would behoove you, is that a word, to behoove you? It'd be prudent of you to lock your bike up, too, even if you're working every day. And knowing is half the battle. I want to give a big shout-out to Steve A. Thank you, man, for buying me a coffee for this week. And I'm hoping through the grace of God that I said something that was valuable to you, even though I did reference the most holy one a lot in this early show and um, give you something about insurance and protecting your ride. If by any chance you are curious about who the heck I am, check out my website at KenBlanchard.com. That's K-E-N-N-B-L-A-N-C-H-A-R-D.com. All right, my friends, that's it for this week. I want to thank you for listening, downloading, and subscribing to your favorite righteous podcast, Indian Motorcycle Radio. Now may the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon you. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the hollow of his hand. Kick stands up. Let's ride.